specific timing and it worked for that reason. You know what I mean? I just yeah. don't see that. So because I don't see that, I feel like this is what we're going to get. We're going to have the bend, don't break type thing and just hope that we finish drives. But when we don't have it, we're not playing a team who's giving penalties. We're not playing a team who's dropping open passes. It's going to hurt us. Yeah. I, I, we definitely lucked out a lot on defense now that a I lot. think about it. I mean, they, I, Cam, do you know how many penalties Pitt committed on offense? Well, it was a lot. Let's go look it up, friends. Um, <laughs> we lucked out a, a lot, but um, they let me Batman see. They here. committed. They committed seven, and we accepted six. Okay. So. Right. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the, the Pitt definitely shot themselves in the foot with their penalties. Jay, I kind I. <laughs> I love what you said about the D-line and Bubba Bold, and other than that, you know, who knows. Um, it was good to see Sam Brooks get in there, good to see Corey Flagg. I think a lot of Hello. people were uh, – Couch. Um, I got to shout out Couch. <laughs> you, I was just about to say him. Couch. He did his thing today. I was yeah. just about to say him. Couch broke up a few plays. Um, Kim, I'm going to ask uh, again, who is covering Addison? Was it Ivy or Blaze? It was – It was no, he was, he was moving around okay. uh, from what I saw. And, again, I was out a little bit, so I wasn't 100% uh, – on who was on him but he was moving around a lot and they they did some things to scheme him open um with their their concepts which is really good um but no shout out to Corey couch and shout out to even if it wasn't everything like just just like jay said so maybe Bub or blake baker isn't doing everything that you would want to see but he finally did something that pretty much every single miami hurricanes fan had and journalist, blogger, everybody, all of us have been talking about for two years now. And actually longer than that, going back to when Trajan Bandy was here. Put this guy, who is a short, small, shifty corner, put him inside at the slot and let him cook. Because mm -hmm. he oh, cannot necessarily what? be outside with these 6'4 dudes and everything, but put him with the shifty inside receivers – and regardless of what it is, it's a whip route, it's a wheel route, it's an inside fade, it's a, uh, a mesh route, whatever you're going to run, the whole vocabulary or, or route tree, put this guy over there and let him play man-to-man -man against that dude. And you finally saw what Takori Couch can do in that situation. He balled out of control. I don't ask for much, bro. I don't ask for much. That's it. Exactly. That's all I, I, want. Exactly. I don't ask for much. But when I ask skill for set, bro. It's it. skill set. That's all I've ever been talking about is skill set. That's what he does. He's a covered dude. I'm glad that he's not scared to hit, but he, he's never going to be a big hitter, bro. Like, if you're not using that, I don't understand it. Exactly. Thank he, you. he wants mm -hmm. to cover, bro. Like, Thank that's you. where he literally wants to yeah. put me. That's what I play. That's what I like playing. Put me and in look, he did, he did come up to make a couple of tackles today. So he showed the level of physicality that he has. But if you're expecting him to be a Bubba Bolden or an Amari Carter or a Gervin Hall in terms of hitting ability, that ain't it. But he's better than all three of them put together in terms of man-to-man -man coverage. Snap exactly. the ball, you get a release, you run your route, and I'm going to be on you like white on rice. Stick to you like glue. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be in your jersey all day long. And he was from sideline to sideline, short, intermediate, deep. It didn't matter. Man's made plays. So yep. why is it taking us so long to get to a point where we did that? And look, we're only playing three cornerbacks. Why? I mean, Dunson, he was out there on the punt or the fake punt, which was an amazing, incredible right, play. Yep. play to break right, that. Right. That was big. What? You know, hey, that's I was huge. expecting a fake, too. I don't know. I wasn't expecting on that specific one, but I knew one was coming, bro. I just had that right. gut feeling. But I mean, it's the same thing. Like I was talking about with, um, you know, when I did the question and answer with the Florida State guys uh, before that game. These teams know that Miami has more talent than them. So at some point, pretty much every team, except for Clemson, because Clemson, Clemson's Clemson. So that's the outlier. We're not talking about them. But every other team on the on the schedule, and like North Carolina is pretty decent. So, okay, maybe not them either. Every other team that we're going to play, they're looking for an opportunity to do something special, to pull out a trick play, to go with the fake, because they know that they got to steal those inches. They got to make this play out of nothing when they have an advantageous opportunity to do so because lining up and going just straight against Miami offense and defense all game long for these teams that are inferior in terms of talent, it's not going to go well for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just, um, quick stat to Corey couch had three pass deflections today. So he, he was, oh. he, yeah, he was playing pretty good. He was a guy that I wasn't sold on coming into the year just cause 
when I saw him last, because it it all goes back to last fall camp, and I should have you know put this thought uh, away a long time ago, but he was like the smallest dude I've ever seen on a football field. Should have listened to me, bro. That's what you should have did. Right. No, he he is, but this is the inverse of what Jay said yeah. so well about the wide receivers. If you miscast him and put him in a position that does not suit his build athleticism and skill set then it's going to be a problem if you put him out there as cornerback one so he's going to match up against your Amon Richards is your George Pickens your Judy your Amari Carter or Amari Cooper you know when you're going to put him against everybody's all-american wide receiver and say hey shadow this guy all across the field and cover him that might not could go well for him you know what I mean he's going to make some plays and everything but over the course of time the height difference, and honestly, I mean, he's quick, but not too, too fast. That's probably going to play into things as well. But if you take what you have with the Corey Couch and you put him where he can be successful like they did today, you're going to get performances like this because you're putting him in a situation to be successful. Bingo. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you, that's perfect. That, that I feel like that just that perfectly explains a lot of the downfall for the Canes the last few years, just misplacing players and putting them in positions where they can't succeed. And, a um, lot of positions, yeah, it, I'm yeah. putting Carter in that same category. I'm gonna go there real quick. Yeah, go there. Let's, let's hear Where's it, man. You, this is the reaction show. They created a position for him and didn't put him there, bro. That's where he's supposed to be at. He's not a free safety, bro. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Helping us get a, get a target every game being on the bench. Let me ask you this. <laughs> What's up? Let me, no, straight up. Would you put him at striker and play him over Frierson and or Keontre Smith? Because for me, no. No, I wouldn't. But I but based I think on, Jay does have a point. Based on their progression. Based on their progression and based on and based on where they are. You, I mean, look, I know we lost to Clemson, but did you not see that Gervin or that uh, Gilbert Frierson was the second best defender on the field behind Bubba Bolden? Oh, I definitely that, saw that. I've been, so like, I've been, actually, I've been on the Gill wave for a minute now. I don't know why he got as much hate as he did. Right. But well, me, I mean, just because he, they, you know, he, he he played cornerback his senior in high school instead of free yeah. safety, which I thought was his better position, and some people started hating him because of that. And da, 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 you know, whatever. You know, he he wears goals, and he went to uh, you know, Gables High, so they think that he's you know a thug or whatever. So I mean, there's still people in our fan base who think that way. So whatever. But my point is, he's so good at this position. And has two more years to play it. And then you have Smith, who's almost as good, and then he has time behind or to play that as well. I don't see a spot, even at a position that quote unquote is perfect for Amari Carter. I don't see a I don't see a seat for him. Because that's well, I'm talking taken. about I'm talking about when it was first created. Right now, I'm I'm a big fan of Gil. Like I'm mm-hmm. I don't talk about him as much, but I've been a big fan of him because I never understood where the hate was coming from. I felt like it really all came from one play against Florida. And people just decided he said because people don't know. No, yeah. Which was it wasn't yeah, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't even Gill's here? fault on that play, by yeah. by the way. It wasn't even his fault. Whose fault was it? <laughs> Cam. All right, <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's my point. So but, for me, the only wait. the only reason why I'm not putting Carter there, not I'm not I'm not including the the progression that him and Keontra made because they both doing their thing right now. Sure. The only reason why I'm not putting him there is because of depth at the position. Outside of that, that was his. That's where he fits best to me, bro. Like he's a physical player. I don't care what his numbers for pounds say. When they first created the position, before we had it solidified, I felt like that was his best position. Just as where his skill sets to be used, because he's still a liability in pass coverage, and he's still making the same right. play every game that he's made when but he does striker, get one on opportunity. That striker position has such a heavy coverage responsibility that's why uh what's his name uh ultra perm um Romeo Finley that's why he was so good at it because he had the physicality to be in the box but also any of those times with the slot receiver or tight end when he had to flip his hips and get vertical he was making plays so I mean if you're huh I said something just gotta give bro because but but, but, but that's what I'm saying so if you're not if you're not gonna beat out ultra perm in the past because you're not and you're not gonna beat out Gill or three or four right now, you're a man without a country. Mm-hmm. Well, he could he could be a man without a country. <laughs> he, <laughs> I, I don't see that he's in front of Bubba and uh and Gerg though. So I, I, could, I feel like he I just feel like he just if if I'm looking even next level, bro, I don't trust him back there. I don't feel like that's where his best 
position is. Just just talking strictly Amari, yeah. not even the team. Yeah. I don't it, feel it's like not. his best position is back there. I mean, maybe he'll be like um maybe he'll be like Thomas Davis coming out of Georgia, yes. where he played safety slash a little bit striker, buck, whatever you want to call it, and then got to the NFL and they're like, Yeah, no, you're just gonna play weak side back or we're gonna put another twenty pounds on you and let you be athletic yeah. at this level. Maybe that's and his I'm thing. I'm saying striker because I wouldn't when we had the two linebacks we had last year, and now I feel like we're starting to get a little bit more answers at least. Plus, there's more bodies. I wouldn't put him at linebacker where he's at right now. But striker for me is just up in the box. Like if I'm if I'm right. using him there, I'm probably doing a lot of blitzing and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even so that'll be like, like, no, yeah. Amari, Amari, Amari is definitely good in you know yeah, pass so rushing sister. Okay. Yeah, uh, just him course. out there free. No, bro, that's yeah. not that's not his skill set at all, at all. Okay. I feel like I don't see the practices. Somebody tell me he. If somebody says that he's not getting cooked every day one on one, I would think they were lying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't see it, bro. Like not the coverage. I just don't like anything pass related. The best you're gonna do is light somebody up. And I heard I was listening to Storm Surge, um, for the first time. And Ricky made a point, bro. Like every time he lights somebody up, they get up, bro. So it's not a, your your hits ain't even doing nothing. All these big hits I mean, aren't doing. It's anything. a good point. So it's literally a waste of a play. Nah, that's a real good point, though. Damn. Uh, yeah, that, mm. that, shout out to Ricky. I'm giving him that. I'm yeah, shout out, <laughs> shout out Ricky. Shout out Ricky on that. Okay, I I wanted to ask you guys uh, just one more question on the defense um, before we start to wrap up. Jay, I, I you've been on the show like uh, a few times over the past few weeks. Yeah. Um. So Cam, I wanted to get your thoughts on the linebackers. Um, they're slow and they played well today. Uh, but I want to see Sam Brooks in the starting lineup. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the the linebackers that we're starting are slow. Yes. Not all of the linebackers on the roster. So, you know, I know that Manny Diaz tried to cut everybody off at the pass this week after Sam Brooks came in and made a couple really nice plays against Clemson. And everybody's like, uh, if he's doing that against Clemson, why in the world are we not seeing him? He's like, uh, he was um, um, the, uh, uh, the, the foot injury. Yeah, 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 the foot injury was the thing. I'm like, okay, does he still have the foot injury? Because if he does not, <laughs> I also remember that his first start was in the bowl game when he had 12 tackles, two tackles for a loss, and yep. a sack in a PBU. So it's time that we go and we do that. And, I mean, hey. Bradley Jennings Jr. is a scholarship player here. He can find a role as a substitute on the defense. He can find a role uh, on special teams and things. But he's been a a literal negative when he's on the field in terms of base defense. Yeah. Why we keep Why do we keep putting him out there? Zach McLeod. <sighs> I might have incorrectly, when he was a recruit, said that he was going to be a first-round draft pick in four years. <laughs> um, but he has, he had at that time the size, athleticism, and instincts, and I don't think that he's necessarily gotten a lot better um, in his time here. He's, you know, a decent rotation guy and whatnot. But, I mean, yeah, we – I said it at the beginning of the year. The thing that – we should be leveraging at linebacker is the immensely increased athleticism. So that means Sam Brooks. That means Avery Huff. I mean, we're obviously seeing um, Corey flag and then a little bit of uh, Tyreek Austin cave. All of those guys are more athletic than 44 and 53. So if again, that's the strength of the position, why are we not? playing to that strength it is mind-boggling and baffling to me so yes i want to see sam brooks out there more yes i want to see Corey flag out there more and he got a lot of run today uh number 11 on defense he's playing really well and if i don't see avery huff out there in somebody's position for some kind of snaps that means something soon i'm gonna get real angry i'm already real angry <laughs> i mean no but the, no the thing about it is like you have a guy who's 6'3", 210, and runs a 4'5", at linebacker. Play him. Figure it out. If you if you change the defense to create this striker position, 
right? So you can find a way to get your best defenders, which is what it was billed as, right? You're getting your best defenders on the field so that they can be successful. You're telling me that you got Avery Huff from St. Thomas Aquinas, who I've seen do incredible things on the field, that everybody's seen do incredible things on the field, and the only reason he redshirted last year was because of academic reasons, and you have him cooling on ice, handing out water cups on the sideline? What are you doing, Blake <laughs> Baker? <laughs> I'm gonna I I wanna make a comment on the on the line.